Hi, I'm Corey. Uh, today we're going to be talking uh, about more than words, using WordPress for business, productivity, health, and all sorts of interesting things. Uh, I come from, these days, Saugerties, New York, which is a little town uh, four hours south of here, a couple hours north of New York City. I've been a web developer for 20 years, a long time. Uh, started in the late 90s, um, before WordPress, if there was such a time. Um, in the early 2000s, uh, after building uh, static websites for many years, I got very interested in building uh, what are called SaaS apps, web apps, basically trying to make a website more than a brochure. Uh, and this kind of sparked a, an entrepreneurial streak in me as well. Uh, so I've, for the last however many years, have been focused largely on you know, how can I make websites do interesting things. And then along came WordPress, and uh, I've been messing around with WordPress now for about seven years, and uh, a few years ago got very interested in seeing what I could do with it more than just serving up content, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, a couple of things, I still do contract work uh, for a company called Valet, awesome little agency. And then uh, my passion project is a plugin called Kanban for WordPress. You'll notice the, the fancy swag that I'm wearing here, um, which will be shamelessly plugged twice in my talk, but not more. So you'll have to bear with me. So let's start with a little bit of the history. Uh, 2013, so five years ago, our illustrious leader, Matt Mullenweg, mentioned using WordPress as an app platform, so again, essentially using WordPress for building web apps, more than just serving content. He also talked at the time uh, about WordPress becoming the operating system for the web, which is an, an interesting analogy. Because we're used to, nowadays, using uh, apps on our phone, uh, on our operating systems, but also on the web for doing things like tracking, uh, tracking data, interacting with each other, being social, whatever it might be. Um, so thinking of WordPress as an operating system is actually a really interesting analogy uh, when you think about you know, serving up uh, applications. So today, uh, basically to, to accomplish that, we're on WordPress, uh, we're using plugins, we're interacting with SaaS apps, you know, other, other services. And basically this lets us use WordPress for, uh, as more than, more than just a CMS, which is great. Uh, the other thing that I'm seeing is uh, a lot more businesses and even individuals are starting to use WordPress, like an operating system, self-hosted apps, so basically creating a new instance of WordPress installed somewhere, maybe on a, a subdomain, um, and then running a single plugin to let them accomplish something. So we'll talk about that in a little bit too. So goals for the talk today, um, I wanna just generally talk about creative ways to use WordPress. Um, I'm gonna talk a lot about websites I've built, because again, this has kind of been my trajectory. Uh, problems that I've seen and solved or didn't solve uh, or tried to solve. Um, also interesting things that I've heard about that people are using WordPress for. Um, and then also just crazy off the wall things that, that I've imagined. Uh, I'm gonna list you know, essentially the problem that, I, that the, the website or the web app is trying to solve um, and how I might solve them because I have all the answers, I am an expert. No, this isn't true at all. Um, but given 20 years of experience, here's how I might approach it. Please take it all with a grain of salt. Some of it's a little bit of uh, creative thinking, um, wishful thinking, maybe. Um, the other thing is that this is basically going to just be a random list of random things. My goal here is really to inspire you to think about how you can use WordPress, again, for as more than as a CMS. Um, and if you've got a specific idea, or hopefully if I, um, you know, set off a light bulb for you um, and want to uh, talk through how, that, how we might solve that, if I don't answer the question uh, during the talk, raise your hand afterwards or come find me. And, um, you know, I'll help you brainstorm how we, could, how we could actually build that. So let's start with the obvious, e-commerce. So years ago, uh, I worked for, I was working for an agency and wound up building a first draft of an app 
web app on WordPress using WooCommerce for uh, a company called Freshly. Um, anybody familiar with Blue Apron? So Blue Apron is a service that's pretty popular, especially in the US, um, where they ship you a box full of ingredients and then instructions on how to cook dinner. So basically, it saves you a trip to the grocery store. Freshly was trying to solve the problem, uh, even a, a level up, they would completely cook the meal for you and then ship it to you, so all you had to do is microwave it. Um, some of the challenges with this, however, I would sort of the, you know, the obvious things of, um, you know, how do you solve checkout? How do you solve uh, payment processing? Well, obviously WooCommerce took, took care of that for us. Um, but that you get into some of the, the bigger challenges like uh, processing recurring payment and then also scheduling. So this is where it got crazy. They had to, they had chefs that would cook, you know, hundreds of meals between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. so that FedEx could show up at 9 a.m. or whatever it was and, you know, take all of these cooked meals away. So what that meant was WooCommerce had to process all of these orders at midnight so that the payments would go through by 2 a.m. so that the chefs could cook these meals. This is where it got, you know, uh, became, went a step beyond your sort of normal e-commerce where, uh, or even subscription where payments just go through whenever they want. We had to have them go through at midnight. Um, so this was a huge challenge uh, and uh, server issues and all sorts of stuff. For better or worse, Freshly uh, took off like a rocket. So suddenly uh, WooCommerce was trying to process 10,000 orders a day, um, all at midnight. Um, so anyway, you can see some of the challenges uh, that, we, that we had to face. The other thing was um, doing interesting reporting, basically spitting out custom reports so that the chefs could cook these meals. Um, but anyway, it, it eventually they, they wound up growing beyond WordPress. Um, but it, it was a really fun, interesting challenge. And, uh, and one of my first big like, oh, right, there's, there's a lot more we can do here. So around that time, I had another client um, that was specifically interested in uh, the, the elevator pitch was basically Yelp. If you're familiar with Yelp, it's reviews of restaurants and, and bars and, and, and whatnot. Um, but specifically for reality television. So uh, the client would spend endless hours watching reality TV, take careful notes of every restaurant and bar that the uh, people's, people on the reality television show would go to, um, and then put them all into a website where you could then go because uh, apparently people like to eat where other people have eaten on camera. Not something I can relate to personally, but not judging. Um, so how did we accomplish some of these things? Um, we used a plugin called uh, Theme My Login that took care of the um, users signing in and uh, and uh, interacting, rating uh, venues that they've been to, that kind of thing. The other crazy thing was, again, she would watch the, this um, all of these shows. I can just picture her with like six televisions, like a mad scientist, you know, uh, evil villain. Um, uh, but she found it much easier to review these shows and make these lists in spreadsheets. So she would essentially, every at the end of every week, having watched all of these shows, uh, we had to import all of these reviews into the website. So we used a plugin called uh, All Import. Um, we also ran into issues with, um, or uh, another problem to solve was ratings. Um, so uh, there again, there was a plugin um, that that let us basically add where people could, you know, add comments, native functionality, um, use a plugin where you could choose, you know, one to five stars, that kind of thing. Um, the last big interesting challenge. Uh, I, now it's solved. There's a plugin called uh, Geo My WordPress, which is just such a great name. Um, but back then, I didn't. We didn't have such a solution, so I actually had to write a bunch of uh, custom code that would figure out the the uh, lat latitude and longitude of the location, um, and then map it to the search engine so that people could type in, you know, their their lat and long or or um, you know what's within 30 miles of me, that kind of thing. But it's it was which was an interesting challenge. Um, but again, one of those things that that got me thinking about. Okay, so you've got you know a regular post type. Um, in WordPress, that is, you know, that is a venue. That is the uh, the sushi place on the corner. You know, how do you how do you start adding geolocation to that? All right, so that's Yelp. Uh, what about let's say we wanted to emulate Twitter? 
just getting creative here. Um, I asked this recently on the, uh, the post status um, Slack community, if you're familiar. Um, and, uh, and we actually, a bunch of us had, had fun sort of brainstorming this because I was like, well, would you use BuddyPress, you know, sort of the community elements? Um, and, and everybody was like, no, dummy. This is all built into WordPress, right? So you'd, basically, you'd create a, um, a custom post type, call it tweets, right? Um, and, and right away, you've got tagging. Now, you'd have to figure out how to, if somebody typed in a tweet, which is essentially a post in this case, and did hashtag uh, WCMTL, right? How would you then map that to a tag? Um, so I think you'd have to write a little custom code, basically. Um, this is for the nerds among us, the devs. Um, you would have to use, uh, what is it, save posts, right? There's a, there's a filter, so after a post is saved, a tweet. Um, basically, you could, you could go through it, find all of the hashtags, map those to tags. But then, you'd ha then you could benefit from the native functionality, right, which is built into WordPress slash tag slash uh, WCMTL, and you'd see all the tweets. Uh, I think the, f the final challenge there would be, uh, you know, how, assuming that every uh, user, every person who signs up, right, their quote unquote Twitter account would be a, a WordPress user account, uh, how would you follow those authors? Um, and, in, and in looking for, you know, obviously I started to brainstorm ways to solve this, but um, there's a, a guy named Pippin Williamson uh, who actually wrote a great tutorial on this. Um, so uh, another great example of in the, the WordPress world, pretty much every problem has been solved um, and probably a better developer than me has written about how to do it. Uh, just to take this one step further, let's say you wanted to build Snapchat, because I guess that's what all the, uh, the kids are into these days. Um, there's actually a plugin called Post Expiration Date, which will remove a post uh, on a scheduled date. Um, so that would solve sort of that, that one differentiating feature um, between Twitter and uh, Snapchat, because they're identical, right? I don't know. These are a, a, a lot of it's lost on me. I'm, uh, like I said, I've been building websites for 20 years. Um, so, so speaking more broadly about social media in general, um, how can you use WordPress to manage your social media presence, right? Um, sort of the obvious problem or the obvious solution, um, the obvious thing that most people want to do is if it's a blog, uh, if you're writing blog posts, you want to promote your posts. Um, and so there are, you know, again, there are plugins that'll, that'll do this. Post Promoter Pro is one of them. Um, Revive Old Posts is another. But let's say we wanted to take this a step further. If you've heard of an, uh, their apps called, there's an app called Buffer. There's apps called Edgar. Um, there, I'm sure there's, there's more of them. But basically, if you wanted to schedule, you know, schedule posts, um, and, and maybe that has nothing to do with, uh, um, your, your actual blog posts or whatever. Um, actually, there's some uh, wonderful folks here uh, who wrote a plugin and run a service called Social Web Suite. Um, I wrote a little plugin called uh, Schedule Tweets, which is sort of a simpler version. Um, and then uh, WP to Tweet. So this is, this is a great example of um, if, you, if you are a developer, you're probably going to roll your own. Don't roll your own. Um, these are solved problems. There are plugins that'll do it for you, um, because uh, if if you've ever tried to integrate with some of these these APIs, uh, not only do they uh, often not only are they often complicated and sort of tangled, um, but they also seem to change. <laughs> um, a lot of the uh, was it Facebook? Well, and Twitter just changed their API, making this kind of a. Uh, yeah, it's a tough problem. So anyway, I, I highly encourage, at least for solving these problems, use plugins. Let somebody let it be somebody else's problem. All right. So getting back to uh, to client work, using that as a as a timeline for some examples. Um, a few years ago, I uh, had to build a website for a company in Florida that had a bunch of cute little uh, bungalows on the beach. So they said, okay, well, you know. I, Maybe VRBO existed at the time. Airbnb, I don't think, existed. Um, but anyway, let's say you wanted to solve that problem now, right? You've got a bunch of properties. How do you manage the actual uh, rental of this stuff? Um, amazingly, there's a plugin called WP Properties. But you could also use, um, what would you use? Basically, you could use like an EDD. You could use WooCommerce. Um, doing recurring payment. Um, scheduling would, would become challenging. 
so you'd probably want to use a custom post type, you know, or, or some sort of calendar integration. Um, but some interesting challenges or some interesting problems to solve. The other really fun one here was not only uh, were they, did they task us with arranging the property rental, right? But they said, okay, well, so, so you know, people arrive at the house. We've now also got kayaks and beach chairs and other stuff that we want to let, uh, let them borrow. So that was fun. Um, there, there is, you know, again, there's a, there's a plugin called uh, WP Inventory Manager. But um, back then, what we wound up doing was creating a custom post type, one for each item, um, and then adding, uh, using, I think we used uh, advanced custom fields. Um, basically, added fields that said check in, check out. You know, added dates and assigned them to people, and then and then gave the uh, the renters access to that. So. Uh, it kind of, you know, went, went a step de deeper. Um, another project that I did, um, anybody heard of Tough Mudder? So Tough Mudder is this crazy organization full of crazy people that run these crazy events where basically they create insane obstacle courses um, that are designed to destroy you. Um, and people pay money to go run these courses that are designed to cause them suffering and pain. Um, and it's really fun, I, I suppose. Um, so, uh, so I was working with a team that was tasked with building uh, an intranet for these guys. So they were a, um, a, a remote company, um, ba some of it based out of Brooklyn, but, but again, people everywhere. So they, they wanted to, to use WordPress as an intranet. Um, there are there are intranet plugins, but um, I honestly encourage you to roll your own. It kind of depends on because it depends on what you as a company or the company that you're building the website for or whatever needs, right? So um, the first thing you need to do is protect that that content, right? So um, there's basically there are very simple ways to to protect pages. There are plugins that'll do it. Um, Restricted Content Pro is one of them. But there, are, uh, it's also really easy if you're comfortable enough to go in and edit a template. It's really easy to add just a few lines of code to basically say, if not logged in, then redirect to the home page or whatever. Um, so so that's kind of the the easy. Uh, the easy part of this, um, then you start looking at um, what's next. Oh, employee directory. Um, so there are ways to display users on the front end. Uh, you could use native functionality, like um, there's you know there is an author archive page essentially. So there are all of your users if you want to do it that way. Um, you could also use uh, there are a number of CRM plugins. Um, and one of the neater flows that I've seen, did I really just say neater? That's neat. Um, cooler, slicker, I don't know. Random words here. Um, but anyway, um, exporting your uh, address book from you know, Google or something, now I'm obviously off into, to, uh, we're not really talking about intranets anymore, but, but let's say like you wanted to get your content into a CRM, basically you can export your address book from you know, Gmail or Yahoo or whatever you're using. Um, use a plugin like all import um, and then suck that right into WordPress users. Now you've got all your users there. Um, talk about project management. Ah, here's the first time I plug my plugin. That's redundant. Um, Kanban for WordPress, if you're familiar with Kanban, um, as a method, it's, it's uh, a lot of people also know Trello. That, that is a Kanban board. Um, basically, it's, really, it's a really good uh, workflow for project management. So of course, I'm going to advocate that. Um, but there are also other, uh, other word project management plugins. Uh, if you were looking to build into the internet something like file sharing, right? Dropbox. If you didn't want to use Dropbox, you wanted to use WordPress for that. Um, or asset management, that's another popular way, right? Like for Tough Mudder, they wanted all of their logos in one place so that they could then send uh, press to, uh, to one place to download you know, approved logos, that kind of thing. Um, you could basically use the built-in media manager, right? But then you've got to, you, you need some way, you can use galleries, um, you could manually put those images on a page. Um, and then there are also obviously plugins, uh, 
Asset Manager, WP Download Manager, um, and actually WP Mayer, which is a website full of tutorials, had a pretty great tutorial on creating an asset management section of your site if you wanted to do that. But let's get crazy, right? So that's the intranet for Tough Mudder. What if you actually wanted to run the event? Um, Sure enough, <laughs> there are plugins for that. But breaking it down into parts, right? Um, the first, the first challenge might be how do you sell tickets? Um, you could use something like WooCommerce, EDD. Um, there's a an awesome plugin called Event Espresso, um, and then you could also integrate with third-party uh, services like uh, Eventbrite is a great one um, for selling the ticket, um, calendar view, that kind of thing. Um, if you're a developer, don't build your own calendar. It's insane, it's messy, time zones are a nightmare. Uh, I strongly encourage you to use a library or, you know, or a plugin or something like that. Um, but then the actual day of the event, there's an awesome plugin called Events Manager. Um, this, is, this, is, <laughs> this is one of the things I love about WordPress. At this point, there's a plugin for everything. It's amazing. Um, so while I was brainstorming this talk, uh, there is a, a Facebook group called Advanced WP, which is a really cool community of people uh, asking hard questions, sometimes easy questions, um, but everybody's got an opinion, so everybody weighs in. Um, so I said, you know, how are you guys uh, and gals creatively using WordPress? One of, the, one of the best answers on there was somebody said, uh, I use it to manage vacations and group trips. I said, okay. Um, so things like uh, a countdown timer, if you've got people that are checking into a website, everybody's going, um, coming to Montreal for a WordCamp. Um, you know, adding a, adding a countdown timer, so uh, that was solved by a um, JavaScript library that basically would add it automatically. But there are a lot of really neat little, I, did, I said it again, neat. Anyway. Um, there are uh, third-party services or websites where you know, they'll let you embed a countdown timer. I thought that was really cool. Um, flight info, itinerary, obviously that could just be uh, posts. You know, if you add a custom post type, you can add, um, add all the content details you want. Um, but then I realized that uh, a good friend of mine had actually done something like this and, and taken it a step further where uh, he rode his bike, this guy's nuts, uh, rode his bike across the United States. It took him a long time, obviously. Um, but he, uh, on his website, he had this little tracker, so anytime you could sign in, or anytime you, you wanted to, you could look at his website, um, and, and there was a little, you know, a little him bicycling across the United States, um, pedaling furiously. Um, so I asked him, I said, you know, so how did you, how did you do that? Like, that's, that's a, something different. Um, in, to solve this particular problem, uh, the, he used a, um, uh, a mobile phone app called Bubbler. Hadn't heard of that. Um, tied that into a third-party uh, product called Spotwalla. Hadn't heard of that. Um, which then had an embeddable widget that he then, in, you know, added to his uh, his WordPress homepage. Um, so it's uh, a great example of where basically you can really get creative um, uh, to to check that this actually worked. Sure enough, I had Googled it and found that there was a tutorial on how to do this. And this is one of those like it's not even it's not a plugin. It's not even a third party to a plugin. It's a phone app to a third party to a plugin. So um, doing a little hacking, but it doesn't necessarily require code. Um, you can, you can get pretty creative. So what about other uh, business cases? Business, we get serious here. Um, if you are a small business, if you have a client that is a small business, here are different ways that uh, small business, or big business, I guess it doesn't have to be small, um, can get creative. Use WordPress, right? The, the scenario that I'm starting to see more and more is businesses say, you know, they, they're, they're logging into, uh, you know, an app to do project management, they're logging into an app to do social media management, they're logging into an app to manage their books, whatever it might be, um, and getting kind of tired of all these different systems that aren't talking to each other, having to sign into different places, having to, you know, you get a team of eight people, now you're managing all the passwords and everything for all this. So 
more and more businesses are starting to use WordPress admin as a control center for their business and managing lots of uh, aspects of their business in one place, which I just think is amazing. So talking about uh, business workflow, this actually got added uh, to my talk 20 minutes ago when somebody was like, oh, have you thought of this before? Um, but <clears throat> using something like uh, Gravity Flow was the plugin that he worked on um, for business workflows and processes. So you've got a form, you collect some data, um, and then it's more than just it sends an email. It's like, what if you, you know, people uh, submit an order form or a, you know, a warranty replacement or something like that. Um, you need to know that somebody looked at it, then somebody shipped it, then, that, then they got it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so you can ma apparently map out entire workflows with multiple steps steps to, to solve this kind of thing, which is really cool. Uh, here comes plug number two, um, CRMs, which is um, customer relationship management, sales tracking, that kind of thing. Um, you can use my plugin, an awesome plugin called Kanban for WordPress. Um, there's also a, um, a plugin called WPCRM, and there, there are a couple of other ones. There's one called No BS uh, CRM, I think. Um, and then, you, again, you can integrate with um, dedicated apps, like there's a, um, an app called PipeDrive that specifically is for tracking sales and sales funnels uh, and how much money that you've won or not won and that kind of thing, and obviously you can integrate with something like that. So if you're creating a business website, uh, you want to uh, manage your reviews. You know, people are leaving your reviews on Yelp, uh, on um, Google, wherever. Uh, there's actually a new service that just came out recently called WP Business Reviews that aggregates all of these reviews uh, into one place and lets you um, check them out and basically make sure you're, you're doing okay. Um, customer feedback. So same idea. Um, you can obviously set up forms. There are lots of form builders, ways to collect feedback from your customers. Uh, taking that a step further, there are uh, services that will let you uh, you know, in exchange for a tweet or in exchange for a review, let you give away content or give away a coupon, that kind of thing. Um, sorry, I'm losing track of my spot here. Oh, uh, support, right? Um, for uh, those of us who build WordPress products, that kind of thing, you want to offer support. Um, you can you can you do something as simple as a contact us form and just reply via email. Integrates really nicely with a service like Help Scout or something like that. Um, there are also obviously plugins. Um, one that blew me away uh, what actually would, would offer live chat and, and all of it went through the, the WordPress database, which might be terrifying um, if you wound up getting a lot of traffic. But, um, but just like these, these crazy things, like this is WordPress, this is meant for you know, blogging, right? That's what people say. Um, the fact that you can host live chat rooms it just blows me away. Anyway, business is boring. What about personal uses? So talk about productivity. Well, I guess that's still kind of kind of businessy, right? Nerdy. Um, but doing things like uh, if you want to host a calendar, uh, if you want, if you've got a, a family uh, and you're trying to remember who's got soccer practice when or whatever. Um, you know, you could, again, integrate a calendar, use a custom post type for events uh, to remember that, um, that your kids have, you know, whatever it is, ballet practice or um, that kind of thing. Uh, also, to-do lists can be shared uh, inside of a WordPress admin or not. Um, there are plugins that will do it. You could also do something as simple as, uh, again, a custom post type and then add a checkbox, things are done or not done. Um, Bookmarking. Uh, so if any of you are familiar with Delicious, Delicious has kind of fallen off a bit, but um, something like Pinboard or Pinterest, um, WordPress lends itself to this really well. Um, this was another idea that came from the Advanced WP group that said uh, people would set up a, a, a WordPress instance that you know nobody knew about, but they would then go in and just add a post for every article that they read or wanted to read, um, URLs to links that they didn't want to forget and all that kind of stuff. And then you've got the built-in search, which isn't great, but it's something, right? Um, and just a great way to collect this data that isn't hosted on a third party or hosted with a third party so that it, it doesn't go away or crash. Well, it crashes if you... If you, if you mess up, but then it's your own fault. Um, 
some great plugins that help with this too. Um, our, uh, oh, add media from URL, so that's kind of like a, a Pinterest. You can collect images, WP book, bookmarks, um, and then oh, this should have gone in business, but basically creating a KB or a knowledge base. Um, in my world, working with agencies, uh, a lot of agencies want to collect sort of group knowledge. If, if somebody learns how to do something, you want everybody else to benefit from that. So basically setting up a, a knowledge base where everybody can share everything that they've learned. Obviously, Word, uh, WordPress lends itself to that. Uh, running a diary, I actually use this. Um, so there, again, there are plugins, but um, you can essentially set up a WordPress instance and you know every entry is a uh, <laughs> is a blog post or whatever. Now, if you're like me, you probably don't want that public. Um, all of my hopes and dreams and uh, crazy internal dialogue that basically nobody in the world is ever going to care about, but it makes me feel better. Um, but I got a little creative and uh, set up um, a, using integrating with a service called Mailgun, which is generally known for uh, sending transactional emails. They will also uh, receive an email and then do something with it. So I wrote a little bit of custom code so that every day I get an email that says, what did you do today? And I reply to that email, and that email goes to Mailgun. Mailgun sends it to my website. My website consumes it uh, and creates a post. And that's the entry. So I never have to go sign into the website. Uh, I'm just using WordPress basically for collecting my hopes and dreams. Um, another neat one that, that I just learned about recently, um, another and another instance where I do not recommend rolling your own, um, is uh, Google Reader. Uh, if any of you used that a while ago, and then um, they shut Google shut it down because they're mean, uh, and often shut down services that peop good good normal tax paying people are uh, are using, um, and the, and so I then switched to Feedly, but you know this other app that let me um, basically aggregate. Uh, RSS feeds and read all the articles in one place, but you can do this with WordPress. There's a plugin called WP RSS Aggregator, um, and with I guess it takes a little bit of configuration, but basically you can suck in all of this content from all of these RSS feeds into one place, and then you can sign into your private WordPress or public um, WordPress instance and read all this content in one place, so you didn't have to go to all these blogs. I thought that was really really cool. Um, and then uh, one more usage uh, that terrifies me um, is uh, if, if you've heard of LastPass or 1Password, um, somebody on uh, Advanced uh, WP, on, again, the Facebook group was, was doing this, um, storing all the usernames and passwords for all of their accounts and bank statements. And I said, oh, could you share that URL with me? Um, that was a joke, by the way. You don't want to share uh, the URL to all of your usernames and passwords. Um, Obviously, this person had the website locked down pretty good, um, but uh, but yeah, just use the native functionality. And then again, there is uh, there is also a plugin called Locker um, with no e Locker um, that that offers this. Uh, that's pretty new, so vet it carefully. So, getting more specific, um, coming down from uh, productivity, let's talk about health, right? Um, Again, we're used to now tracking data. Uh, if uh, There's a, a thing called the quantified self, where basically you track data about yourself uh, in hopes in, of changing habits or um, fixing medical problems and that kind of thing. Um, obviously, there are many, many apps on your phone, but that means that a third party has your data. Um, you're also relying on them to have the features you want, that kind of thing. Why not use WordPress, right? Um, so again, we're talking about probably a, a private WordPress instance, unless you have no problem sharing um, all of your personal data with the internet and Google. Um, I did the same thing now. Anyway, um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, create, create a custom post type. Um, use a form builder to collect the data to make it easy on yourself. Um, and then, you know, so a great example might be uh, Gravity Forms to collect the data and then a plugin like Gravity View uh, to spit the data out again and do things with it. Um, you could use something like All Export so you could export a spreadsheet uh, and then pull it into Excel and add it and whatever you do in Excel, draw pictures. Um, but there, and then there are dedicated plugins, Progress Tracker, Habit Builder, things like that. Um, Recipes, collecting recipes. I always, I always um, 
use this as an example for if you were going to build a SaaS app on top of WordPress, which is a whole different talk. Um, but basically, using recipes as an example for collecting content so that you're creating basically your own index. Um, tracking weight loss, things like that. I recently lost 20 pounds. I'll be honest, I didn't use WordPress, but I could have. So what I used was eating better and exercising. It's weird how that works. Um, but again, somebody on uh, Advanced WP um, got really creative with this, uh, has a uh, Fitbit, right, which has all the data. Um, there is a way to get the data out of the Fitbit app, whatever, um, using an API. Um, and then this is brilliant. Set up uh, Stripe. Stripe is a payment processor. Um, uh, and integrated with Stripe so that uh, the, whatever it was, the first of every month or whatever, basically WordPress the, or the code that this person wrote um, would automatically look at all the steps that Fitbit reported that, um, that they, they did or did not step um, and then automatically sent 50 bucks or not sent 50 bucks to a savings account to basically penalize them for not reaching their goals. I thought this was absolutely amazing. Um, and again, very creative use of, uh, of WordPress. Um, so uh, again, talking about personal uses, if you want to expand sort of beyond yourself, get into um, running groups or, or communities online. Um, you've got sort of pretty, pretty well-known, pretty well-established plugins um, like BB Press and BuddyPress. Um, again, the, the tangled web that uh, people interacting online uh, lends itself more towards let it be somebody else's problem, frankly. Um, uh, uh, what, what was the other one? Forum, BB Forum, something. Anyway, um, but basically you can run online forums, online groups, people can talk to each other, that kind of thing. Um, another interesting example from uh, the Facebook group was somebody talking about running their, their local sports group. Um, sure enough, sports press, the plugin exists. Um, but I thought this was really interesting for basically scheduling events, uh, people signing up for events, all that kind of stuff. Um, doing fundraising. You can integrate with you know, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, uh, GoFundMe, that kind of thing. There's also um, uh, a great organization plugin um, called Give. Uh, they often sponsor WordCamps. Um, they've got a, a great product. Uh, and then uh, I thought this was kind of a cool one. Um, basically, if you've got a lot of books or you want to do kind of a book sharing or a tool sharing uh, sort of functionality, um, there's a uh, WP Inventory Manager plugin that does this. Um, but it would also be pretty straightforward to code, where basically you could have um, every post or, or, yeah, every post, if you created a custom post type, um, would be an object, and then you could basically have people sign in and, uh, as users and, and sign in, sign out, that kind of thing. Anyway, so this is basically, I've, an, uh, I've tried to just give you an array of some of the stuff that I've run into, things that I've heard about, uh, talking about, you know, that's basically where we are today. There's so much potential for how WordPress can be used today and going forward. Um, like I said a minute ago, I got a new idea 20 minutes ago talking to somebody here. Um, so I strongly encourage you to, to be thinking about WordPress uh, in new and different ways. To talk, to, talk to the people around you, see how they're using it, um, and go forth and do interesting things. Thank you. Any questions? Any wild and crazy ideas? I should have planted somebody in the back, been like, hey, raise your hand and mention this. Sir? Oh, sorry. So I speak really fast, and I mention lots of websites. Um, will my slides be available? Um, I am planning on writing all this stuff down. <laughs> this is a new talk for me, so uh, I don't have that resource online yet, but I plan to. Sir?
Um, so asking if I use a plugin for when I build, sorry, use a framework for when I build plugins. Um, not generally. Um, for me, usually, especially this kind of stuff, uh, I'm trying to solve a problem initially. So it's usually, uh, you know, since I am a developer, it's just a matter of opening up, you know, functions.php or something like that, and just starting to bash away and see if I could make it work, um, and then uh, later sticking it into plugin form or something like that. Um, but also, a lot of this stuff for me is just like. Can I do it? <laughs> uh, maybe even more than solving uh, real problems for real clients. Like I said, I, you know, some of this has been for clients, but some of it, like uh, you know, tracking uh, my own habits and that kind of stuff, is is personal. Or my diary is is personal use, and I just kind of wanted I kind of wanted to see if I could, you know. Um, so so no, but I could. Anybody else? Thank you very much.